Grease and the Groovers already take a movement and perform it on a regular basis during the day. And aside from sounding like a very suspect euphemism, the idea is that we can use the increased frequency to improve our performance in that movement. This, as opposed to a more traditional method of training, which would see us perhaps only doing this movement two or three times per week, on specific days allocated to training that part of the body. The condition of all of this though, is that in order to grease the groove effectively, we need to stay far away from muscular failure, the point at which we cannot do one more repetition. Pavel Satsalin, widely accredited with creating the Grease the Groove methodology, suggests working at about 50% capacity. And this staying away from muscular failure is what makes the groove so much more different than, say, something like high-frequency training, which would have us just doing more intense working sets on a more regular basis. Which begs the question, does Grease the Groove really work? Can we really just smash out a few quick easy reps scattered throughout the day and actually see an improvement in key movements? Well, let's talk about these so-called benefits for a second because they seem too good to be true. I mean, for one, we have a benefit of increased reps and strength. Intuitive thinking would have us believe that if we want to increase the number of reps we want to do in a set, we should do sets with a higher number of reps. But to better understand why we may increase rep count and strength from greasing the groove where we have lower reps in a set, we need to actually understand what happens when we train. Yeah, we all know about how resistance training causes micro tears in our muscles that then repair and allow us to build more muscle in the future, and that this additional muscle then allows us to produce more force. But on a neurological level, something more subtle is happening here. For us to be able to move against resistance, be it weight or our body, a signal needs to be sent from our brain to our muscle, telling it to contract and do its thing. Now, for a movement that is new to us, this signal is pretty weak, and we literally don't know what we're doing, so our muscles have a hard time in producing the force necessary to create the movement. But as we become more familiar, the neural pathways that facilitate a muscular contraction literally grow as a training response. Much of what we call newbie gains and the fantastic strength increases that we can get as beginners can be accredited to this improved familiarity and efficiency with an exercise. For this reason, Grease the Groove can be fantastic for movements that require a high degree of coordination, but not that much strength. Think about the handstand, for example. Once we have the conditioning in the wrists, the arms, the shoulders to hold ourselves up against the wall, Grease the Groove makes a lot of sense for learning handstands because coordinating all the facets of this skill is more of a case of familiarity than it is slashing reps until you're in the ground. In a similar vein, Grease the Groove can also be highly beneficial for our flexibility training as well. If we think about the reason why our central nervous system may limit us entering a particular range, it will be because it doesn't feel we can keep ourselves safe in the position we're trying to get to. It doesn't care about the shot you're trying to get for Instagram, our CNS's primary job is to keep us alive. But by sitting in that range of motion on a more regular basis, the message we send to our bodies is a clear one, that this is A, okay to be here, and B, make this more a part of my working range. When used well, Grease the Groove can also be a great plateau buster. Stuck at the same number of reps on your pipe push-ups? Use Grease the Groove to get past that point and then once you're there, go back to your normal training. Finding one part of a particular movement more difficult than the rest of it? Grease the Groove that part of the movement and then lead the rest of that movement for your main sessions. These benefits sound great, so why isn't everybody doing this? Well, the downsides are pretty significant and I'll start with the fact that it isn't a great way of building muscle. Now, before you start screaming at your screens, Grease the Groove isn't about building muscle though. I'd make such a good gym, bro. <laughs> you would be right, Grease the Groove is more about capacity and strength. But without the hypertrophic benefits of a more traditional approach to training, the lack of muscle will lead to diminishing returns on the strength goals we're chasing. There are many factors that go into our ability to build muscle. Time under tension, range of motion, nutrition. But actually, proximity to failure is one of our biggest indicators of how we're going to build muscle. And Grease the Groove is specifically designed for us to stay away from failure. Another downside of Grease the Groove is that because we're having to do this sporadically throughout the day, it only really works for using this on one exercise at a time, which makes it more difficult for policing Grease the Groove as part of a holistic program. If we use Grease the Groove for our dips, for example, but in your typical workout you perform push-ups, how much of our pushing gains do we accredit to Grease the Groove over our standard push-up training? Snowballing on from this, it makes it difficult to quantify effort. You know that really good burn you get after a solid workout that lets you know you've truly put a shift in? Yeah, we don't really get that with Grease the Groove, and yet if we're not careful, we can still suffer from overtraining. Grease the Groove may also not be that feasible. Let me paint you a picture. You're out with your family at a nice restaurant, you're having a good time, and then you remember that you've got to do three bodyweight rolls every hour. 
grabbing the side of the table to wrap them out probably will add to the vibe of the evening. But let's take all of these negatives and pretend we've accommodated them. We're staying away from failure, we're warming up before our sets, we're only using this on one movement. And we have a lifestyle that allows us to break up our exercise throughout the day. How should we use Grease the Groove in a way that keeps it effective at building strength and our capacity for work? Well, first we need to understand what our maximum is. So we need to measure it and then work at 50% of that. So if your goal is to get to a 20 second L sit, but you can only hold one for 10 seconds, during your Grease the Groove sets, you should hold an L sit for a maximum of five seconds and have a solid two hours before you go for the next set. I'd then advise retesting your max every two weeks or so. I'd also only suggest using Grease the Groove once we're relatively close to achieving our goal. Going back to our handstand example, if you barely have the strength to hold yourself up against the wall, or your wrists haven't gotten used to you putting weight on them, practicing your kickups with Grease the Groove is at best going to be a waste of time, or at worst going to be a way of injuring yourself. Use key foundational exercises first to get you to a point where you have a solid foundation, and then we can get the most out of the upsides of Grease the Groove once we're strong enough. Crowd Grease the Groove is more than just some sort of sales gimmick. If it was, it wouldn't really be a good one. It's hard to sell a program that says, yeah, just go and do one exercise whenever you want throughout the day. Grease the Groove doesn't work because we're smashing ourselves into pieces every five minutes. It works much in the same way as the rest of fitness philosophy. It works because we're taking something simple and applying it consistently, making it a part of our life rather than an arbitrary five reps of five sets. Anecdotally, I've found Grease the Groove to be super useful. And if you want to see how I've put it to good use in my own training, then check this video out right here.